Hello everyone, we are here at the Sundance Film Festival here in Park City, Utah. Really excited to be here for the premiere of Soundtrack of a Coup d'etat. And okay. it's such an interesting title. Sure. I mean, it definitely is symbolic of what the story is about. It's interesting because we're involving music, which is kind of intertwined with a piece of history involving the government. So what made you take on a project like this, Johan? Oof. Uh, well, the point of departure was actually uh, Nikita Khrushchev at the uh, 15th General Assembly bang ba banging his shoe on his desk. And I never knew that was actually dealing with my own country's history, uh, going back to the Congo, right? And so that sort of a whole research that became sort of quite in-depth, but stumbling onto, for example, also Max Roach and Abby Lincoln crashing the Security Council in protest of the, the murder of Patrice Lumumba in 1961, which was my country uh, and also the United States involved. So this hits home a bit for you. Yeah, so it's a coup and it's, it's at the same time the music. So it's very interesting, the story too, because we've got some very important and impactful individuals who were in Congo. Louis Armstrong, or Louis Armstrong exactly. specifically, didn't even have a clue about what was going on with the CIA. Afterwards he did. But he afterwards did afterwards. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, indeed. So that soundtrack of a coup d'etat is also like the, the United States Department was sending out black jazz uh, ambassadors to sort of whitewash or, or blackwash uh, their sort of diplomacy to hide what actually was going on within the country, which segregation was still happening. But at the same time, while they were sending out the black jazz ambassadors underneath, the State Department was also, the CIA actually was planning a coup. So when Louis Armstrong was sent into the Congo, Literally, the, the CIA was plotting to overthrow Patrice Lumumba, not only overthrowing the, 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 the democratically elected first premier, but also trying to assassinate him. And wow. so you have this sort of... A lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, but yeah, yeah. Also, I know that music plays such a huge influence in this film. I have seen a couple articles where you've actually said that it actually almost emulates an actor, in a sense. Well, yeah, we have like four protagonists. One is a, a Congolese writer, Encoli Jean Bofani. We have André Blouin, who's a freedom fighter, who, whose memoirs has been incorporated, and her daughter, who was very much in collaboration with, 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 with the making of this film, was very much involved and granted us four or five of the chapters of her memoirs, going to be published this year again, or republished. Then we have Sergei Khrushchev, uh, who, who donated all the, the audio recordings, and we have uh, Conor Cruz O'Brien, who was the Irish uh, representative to the United Nations, but then sent over to the Congo. But the fifth protagonist, I always say, is the music. And so while we have sort of, while for me, it's also the, the and, and this is a touchy subject because my country was heavily involved with sort of concocting several genocides, up from even 30 to 39, to 60, and then 61, and then 64. And while I sort of would say that, for example, Abby Lincoln and, and Max Roach were performing their We Insist Freedom Now album, which is very much an activist sort of album in, in response to the apartheid regime and the, and the Sharp Film massacre in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And while that was playing out on Belgian television, the genocide was happening in the Congo. So you have, you have these two sides where, where there's this divide and conquer politics, but against that you have music that is actually as a political agent as well, is trying to bring people together. And you have the joy of independence, you also have, it's not only the bebop and the jazz, mm -hmm. but it's also the rumba. And the rumba goes back to Cuba where a lot of the, the, the Congolese slaves that made up that population of Cuba were actually in reinventing that music in this sort of global state of homelessness that comes back to Congo as the rumba. And the rumba is very much part of, of that celebratory moment of the independence. And also later on when Lumumba died, there was all these songs that were devoted to Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba, the first premier in the Congo. Well, we're really excited to see okay. your take on everything. I'm so excited. I'm a history buff, so I love music Thank as you. well. And um, love to see how the outcome of this is and how sure. it affects the audience when they go to see this. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.